everybody. All right, on three. One, two, three, say good morning. Good. It's good to have everybody here. It's good to have our Facebook church family uh, on board, too. And I just want to start out saying that today's message is going to be uh, interesting. You're not going to hear Joel preach his message, okay? <laughs> it's going to be boom, right down the pipe, the pipe. And I want to inform us of what's going on here, okay? And so I want to start out with a question. Are your hands full? Everybody says it's a trick question, right? Is that what you got? No, think about it. Are your hands full? A lot of times, what do we, what do we got in our hands all the time? And think about that. I'm going to explain a little bit more. Are, are our hands full with work obligations? Are our hands full with, with caring for others? And, and, or is it, you know, uh, worry? Or maybe your hands are even full with good stuff. I want you to hear this today. We're not preaching about good stuff. We're preaching about keeping our hearts in tune to the Lord. Amen. But we can get overwhelmed with a few things, can't we? Gosh, I thought I was the only one. Me and Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah, we know, you know we can get overwhelmed. Man, we just get our eye on the problem, and we keep looking at the problem. And guess what? That problem will grow when you just keep focusing on it, right? But if we focus on the problem solver, God will comfort us, give us wisdom, and work all things together for the good. Amen? So we've got a little bit of reading and stuff to do today, and I just want to really unpack this and, and just say, hey, look, I hope that today is a time of reset. Now, I am not the best banker in the world. I'll keep my checkbook and everything like that. And after a while, the numbers start getting off, right? I always got more money than they do. What's their problem? But I do. And you, if you ever look at my, in my checkbook, you'll see a line that goes reset. <laughs> that means I go back and go, okay, that couple of bucks right there, we're, gonna just, we're just going to go with it, you know? But I know everybody doesn't do that. I try to be a good steward, but I'm going to tell you what, I would probably be... Uh, Probably be divorced if I try to figure out where all that stuff goes because I don't even like me when I'm trying to figure stuff out like that. I'm just going, okay, look, this is what's going on. But we can get overwhelmed. How many people got a lot of stuff on their plate? Yeah, jobs, work, sickness, health, different things like that, loss. I mean, you know what they call that? Life. It is. All of us will experience different things like that. And I pray that today's message will help Hold us together in the midst of the storm, but also keep our eyes focused on the Lord each and every day. Everybody's good with that so far? Good. So I want that to kind of be the backdrop uh, of what's going on here today. I'm going to read this verse, but then I'm going to pull it back in context of what we're talking about, okay? That's not supposed to be there. Is that the last slide? Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. Is that the very last slide there? Uh, yeah, let's let's reset. I was gonna say that's good. I was thinking, now y'all know where we're going. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember putting that there. Good. Hey, it's good. It looks just like that one. Very good. Aren't you glad? You know, when you do these things live, you can't do it. It's just like, here you go. I'll do a little soft shoot. Can we fix that? Yeah, man. But you know what? That's what that's what life is. You got to take it on the fly, man. You got to just keep on going. And that's what I love about our church so much. Because folks are real. Folks are real, and that's it. I mean, years ago, if something like that would have happened, or if I missed the note on the guitar, oh, man, I'd have just been beating myself up. I can't believe, you know. But now I go, Lord, I'm glad you can fix it, because I sure blew it. Aren't you glad? We just got to put it back in his hands. So we're going to roll back in and out. Like I said, uh, if you got your Bibles, we're going to be primarily in Luke chapter, chapter 12. And so it starts out here with this, verse 15. And he said to them, watch out, guard yourself against every form of greed, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Is that interesting to hear? Now, we know that, but we work like it's not, don't we? We've got to get more. More what? Stuff. We like getting more, right? More and more and more. And I often think back, before I got saved, what was I thinking about? You know what I was thinking about? More. More stuff. I'm not preaching against more stuff, but if it's not in the right order, that's all you got is stuff. I tell you what, when we put God first in our life, he will direct our path with everything, with everything, and make it so much more than what we could ever do. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and, and just give you a little background here. Well, I think the best way is to jump into the parable. Let's do that. If you've got your Bibles, this we've got to, you can follow along here. It's called the parable of the rich fool. Right? We don't usually hear that too much these days, do we? Because the world said, man, they're rich, they're good. Have you ever noticed people treat people different when they, they, they got money or think they got money? It's amazing. It is just amazing. I think we just make a fool of ourselves sometimes. What happens if, if you know somebody's got Jesus? I'd rather make over them. I say, hey, you know, we got something in common. 
I do this all the time, and folks that hang out with me, nothing knows. Oh, here he goes again. I'll go somewhere, and you can almost tell most of the time, right, when somebody knows Jesus, right? You go somewhere, and you go through a line or something. It's like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? All this stuff. And I'll go, hey, uh, you know, I think you know somebody I know. Really? Who? I said, oh, I know you know him now. I can tell the way you're smiling. They say, who is that? I said, Jesus. They go, yes, I do, baby. But then sometimes I ask people, they'll have a necklace on and stuff like that, and I'll be checking out and doing different things, going through the grocery line or wherever we're at, because you know God will go anywhere with you, right? He's with you all the time. And I'll say, hey, that's a really cool necklace there. Maybe it's a cross or something. I said, well, tell me about it. Sometimes I get, oh, it's, it's just jewelry. I go, hmm. Oh, uh, oh, my grandmother gave it to me. Oh, that's nice. Well, what's it mean to you? You will be surprised of what people say. What would you say if somebody said, well, what does that mean to you? I'm thinking, how long do you got? The line's going to be long if you ask me because I'm going to say, oh, let me tell you, that means I am forgiven. That means it is finished. That means Jesus Christ, Christ played the price in full, amen? So tune your minds to that. But we get all wrapped around different things, especially in this world of money and stuff and power, Amen. So let's read a little backdrop of this story, and we'll go right on in. Verse 13 says, Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me judge and executor between you? I get all excited. i talking too fast. And he said to them, Watch out. Guard yourself against every form of greed, for a man's life does not consist in abundance of his possessions. Then he told them a parable. Here's our story, right? The ground of a certain rich man produced an abundance. So he thought to himself, what shall I do since I have nowhere to store my crops? Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and I will build bigger ones. And there I will store up all my grains and my goods. Then I will say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take it easy. Eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. I want you to hear that. This very night, your life will be required of you. Then who will own what you have accumulated? This is how it will be for anyone who stores up treasures for himself, but is not rich towards God. Let's talk about that a little bit. The man in, the, in this parable, if you really, I didn't go back and count it, but when I was reading it, I wonder how many times he says, me, I, me, 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 I, I, me, this, mine. There's quite a few times. It's all about who? He thinks it's all about him. Many times in this world, we can think it's all about us. Man, are, are, we, are we wrong to think that? It's all about the Lord, isn't it? But we get all out of whack. But see, take a look at this. He was dependent on himself. He was glorifying himself. He was, he was saying, oh, man, this is, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, you know what? I'm going to build bigger barns. I'm going to get all the stuff that I got. You see, the me and the I and the, all that, my. And I'm going to get more and get more. And then I'm just going to take a break. Does the Lord ever just tell us, he says, rest in him. That don't mean just prop up. He means have peace in him, right? But be busy and diligent because he's coming back, isn't he? And that's where we're going to set the stage on this. If the Lord came right here tonight, right today, and said, I just want to let you all know, at 12 midnight, I'll be back for you. How would you live those next 12 hours? Would they be different? How do you know he's not coming back before I finish the end of my sentence? We don't. So we need to think about those things. All right? And, and I really wonder sometimes, I have to, in my own life, I have to think about what's the big picture? I call it big picture living. What's the big deal? Right? What is, am I going to major on the majors or minor on the minors or what's going on? Because I can get wrapped around the wheel. Can you all get a little sidetracked? Can you get your hands full with stuff that really doesn't matter? I tell you what, it's good to just take and sit back a little bit and go, I don't know y'all do this or not. I've done this ever since I was a kid. When I get ready for bed, say my prayers, get all squared away, and I review my day. Do y'all ever do that? And I review my day, and sometimes, I bet you, I'm sitting there like this. Oh, that was good. That was good. And then there's many days ago, oh, I don't believe I said that. Oh, I don't believe I did that. Maybe that's why that person made that face after I made that comment. Do y'all ever have that? And I'm starting thinking back through there. I know I can't redo it, but here's my big thing. Am I getting all the gas mileage out of my day for the Lord? 
That's what I'm thinking about. Man, what did I do today to further the kingdom? Did I tell anybody about Jesus today? Did I, did I compliment anybody today? Did I encourage anybody today? Or did I just come around with a big shovel that because my hair didn't look right or my big toe hurt or whatever? Not minimizing people going through some big stuff. I never minimize that. But what I want to help us do to get our eyes up on the Lord and it changes everything. Amen? So look at this. So he goes through here, and this guy is all about him. And he's just saying, hey, look at this. Now, when he first started out, he says, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. I'm not telling you to work hard and somebody lay on the couch and you give them your stuff. That is not what I'm saying, amen? We need to be busy about doing what God has. Let me call it this way. We need to be fruitful. He doesn't call us to be busy. He calls us to be fruitful. Do you want your life at the end of the, What did you do with your dash? You've heard that old saying. You know, you, you look at a tombstone and they say, well, they were born in 1965 until here. Do you ever wonder what they did with that dash? Where I work at, I've been out there for 32 years. I have seen a lot of people come and go in 32 years. Guess what? We're still doing the same thing we've been doing for 32 years. But there are a few folks that really made a difference along the way. Now, I know there's been technical stuff that they've made differences and advances, but I'm talking about the people that would speak into your life. The people say, hey, that's wrong. We're not doing that. Is that you? What type of legacy are we leaving? What type of, what type of difference are we making? Or are we all about us? Are we getting all wrapped up about what we're going to do and when we're going to do it and how we're going to do it instead of focusing and ask, ask, asking the Lord to lead God and direct us? Something else I found out a long time ago, when we hold on to something real tight in the, in the world, we can lose the grip on the world, on the word of God. So you start filling up, you've got to have stuff, and you've got to have this and all these different things and, and all this stuff. How much time are we giving God? I pray that it's plenty. Are you starting your day with God? A lot of people say, well, I just pray on the way to work. Well, that's good. The way some people drive, you better be praying on the way to work, amen? I only got to go eight minutes, and I'm like, whoa, hey, hey, what, what's going on? And if you ride a motorcycle, you definitely better be praying, huh? amen? Because it's just crazy. But also, throughout your day, are you about an attitude of prayer? Are you about thinking about, Lord, how can you use me today? What have you put in my hands to be a blessing, amen? It's not always stuff. Maybe it's compassion. Maybe it's that you're a good listener. Maybe it's any of those things. But God has put something in your heart each day that you can produce fruit for the kingdom. Amen? That's what I want to get to today. But guess what? We can be deceived, can't we? We talked a little bit about this here lately. This has been a theme that the Lord has been running through my heart here. And I want to read a little bit of some of the verses and kind of break them out. Again, if you've got your Bibles, we're still in Luke chapter 12. And this is our, really our, our kickoff verse here. And he said to them, watch out, guard yourself against every form of greed, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. It's not about all you got. It's funny. I said, people, people really do treat you different. It's so funny. I got to tell you a story. Where we're at, we're in the control room, and, and I have my hands on a few things, but I'm not the top dog there. I go, I'm, I call it a hey boy. Hey boy, can you do that? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> As I say, I'm just a hey boy. But you've been here a long time. So we had some new folks come in and they're on the back and they're watching this test and everything out there. So I'm standing back here like this and I got a radio on and all this. And this young guy, he came up and he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, uh, what do you do? And I couldn't resist. I said, I run this place, son. He said, I thought so. He said, because you got a radio. And I said, you know what? Next week they're going to put a battery in it. And he went, he went, I said, man, I just work here. <laughs> I said, you see that little gauge over there? It goes up and down. That's what I do. I push a button. It goes up and down. That's what I do. <laughs> but I couldn't resist. But in that split second, when I told him I run this place, he was like, yeah. And then when I told him, hey, we're going to put batteries in my radio next week, he's like, what a loser. <laughs> right? But the joke was on him. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we do that, but man, we, he want, man, he was going ready to all cuddle up, man, and everything. Hey, man, what's up? Well, that's good, you know. I, all that, boy, I tell you what. It was so funny. But it, it, that's how people, it's, it's the perception. The all over there, my boss always used to say, it's about perception. I said, we, we just took a break. He says, perception. What do you want? I'm at a coffee pot. 
running in place. And so what do you want me to do, man? You know, and your boss will always show up right after you finish the big job, right? I got to tell you this. I worked with a guy when I first started my job. I was about 18 years old. And I worked with a lot of guys that were retired. And this guy said, son, I'm going to tell you, you stick with me. I'm going to show you the ropes. I said, okay. And this guy was sharp. He knew stuff. But he was showing me stuff I probably didn't need to know just then. He said, I'm going to show you how to work this thing. He said, first thing you need to do, get you some dirty gloves. You got some gloves? I said, I got some brand new ones. He said, give me those things. Put dirt on them. He said, put them in your pocket. He said, you got a wrench. They give you a wrench. Get a wrench. You got a wrench. I got a wrench. Put it in there. He said, no matter what we do, when we come back in there, this is what he would do, man. I got to have something. Oh, shucks. I can do it with this. He'd come back in there. He'd pull that hat up and go, whoo. And he'd take them gloves off like that and go, pop, and throw that wrench down. Oh. Everybody in the shop said, man, they, what have they been doing out there? He ain't done nothing. He just walking around. I'm not kidding, man. This guy had it down. He goes, yeah. But he was also smart. He goes, so what have you been doing? Oh, we double checked this 409, 16, 36, 40, uh, you know, all this stuff over here. But he was a great trainer. That was, that was something to know probably if you ever get in a bind, right? But this is how he would train me. We had this big diesel. Now, you know the ones you have? You got these little uh, generators at the house about this one? This is as big as the room. And he would, t he would teach me about that thing. Now, this is, this is old school. They don't do this now. This is like 30-some years ago. I'd have my procedure and everything. He said, now, look, I want you to know. I said, I know you can run it. He used to say, I know you can run it when the things are good, but what do you do when things are bad? I said, uh, I was thinking back then I probably should have said pray, but I said, I I'm going to hang with you. That was my answer. I'm going to be close to you, right? I was going to be close to the guy that had the answer. Who's got all the answers? Jesus. So I would run this piece of equipment. He would let me get comfortable. He said, man, you're doing good. Man, look at that. How many, how many gallons? I can still remember. How many gallons does it take of oil? 30 and 35 in the filter. Oh, that's good, buddy. You're doing good. All right? All of a sudden, the thing was going. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. I was like, ah. He said, calm down. What did I tell you? He said, go back and check stuff. I go back through there, go back through there, go back through there. I'm looking, looking at the thing. This is about to rock off the thing, off the foundation. It's going to blow, man. But my teacher flipped the switch on me. He tried to deceive me, right? And he, would, he, would, he knew this thing inside out, and so he flipped a little switch. And he'd just sit there and let me go all over the place. And I go, man. I go, that wasn't in that position. He said, well, you ought to check it. Then put it back, see what happens. I said, I got to watch that guy. He said, I'll never hurt you, but I will train you. That's what he used to say. There's a lot of things that happen in our life that is a good training ground. All right? But I tell you, that right there, I keep that in the back of my mind. Not so much throwing the, the glove down and acting like you're working, but the things that I know things, when things get out of whack, go back to the baseline. Hear what I'm saying? Go back to what, what the last thing God told you and say, Lord, what, what's going on here? So we can use those things. This is one thing the Lord's really showed me in my life, the practical application of his word in everything that we do. You say, well, how in the world is, is, is running a machine like, like a relationship with the Lord because I kept referring to the manual even when I knew how to run it and knew different things I would go back to the manual even though you know the Lord go back to the Bible keep that foundation strong because when the enemy comes and sows a seed or, or, or flips the switch or something else happens guess what then you say wait a minute that's that's not what God said that's not right we need to make some adjustments. Does that make sense? Just kind of pulling it in a little bit. But see what's happening here? But now he's talking about greed. Greed is a good deception, isn't it? Oh, man. Anybody have to make any tough decisions about greed? You know? Well, I know that I said I gave this person my word there, but this is more money. Oh, I know I said I was going to do this, but this is going to be a little bit better. How much does your word mean? I'm going to tell you what. My dad... Well, he was all about that. And I was very thankful. You know, I, probably not a time I ever preached that I don't talk about my dad. And he wasn't perfect by no means, but I wouldn't trade him. Amen. But if my dad said maybe, that was good as gold. I can't even sit there. I'm sure there's probably things that he couldn't do. He, he said, well, uh, hey, uh, one of my big things is when I, when I got my first mini bike, that's why I still ride crazy after all these years. I was about five years old, but I couldn't go by myself. Why not? You're five years old. Right? I said, Dad, can we go riding when you get home? Well, let me see. We'll study about it. I got to do a lot of studying. He wouldn't say, think about it. I'm going to study about it. And I'm like, man, you know, can we go? Can we go? Can we go? 
and at five till four with his lunchbox, I'd be out there. Hey, Dad, we going? He said, son, let me, let me just kick my shoes off for a minute. I said, but you said we were going to go. He said, no, you said we were going to go. I said, we'll see about it. But if he told me, yes, we were going, something major had to happen that we weren't going. Let me tell you, when God says something's going to be, it's going to be. And that's it. Just a man or a woman can only control so much and things like that. And they do their best. I do my best. If I tell you something, I really tried to do that. I will let you down. I'm a man. I'm pointing to Jesus who will not let you down. Amen. But when God says something, it's going to happen. And it's going to go out just the way he said it is. Does that concern you or does that encourage you? I pray that it encourages us. Amen. I pray that it encourages us. So keep that in the, as a backdrop in here. So look at this. I said, your character speaks louder than your collection. It, you know, if, if you're not in tune to the things of the Lord, for the long haul, people don't care what you got. If they, you know, how many people you see, oh, yeah, my boss, this, yeah, you see the boss come in, oh, yeah, 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 oh, I can't stand that guy, whatever the case is. Have you ever wondered, not that we really, I, I guess we should care, don't miss what I'm saying here. But have you ever been in a group and they say, oh, here comes Joe, the whole, whew. I wonder what they say, oh, here comes Buddy. Or they go, hey, here comes Buddy. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I want to be a mirror of Christ. That's what I hope is happening. But I would really hate for people to say my name and go, oh. You know, oh. And I'm sure there's some. Because when you talk about Jesus, they either receive him or they don't. Guess what? I talk about Jesus a lot. I don't beat you up with him. I'll see what's going on, see what's happening. But I tell you what, they know what I believe. How about you? Does your work know what you believe? Does your family know what they believe? Now, it's a double-edged sword in this thing because the minute you blow it, everybody's going to be there. The minute you hit your finger with, with, with that hammer and you say something that is not in, uh, uplifting, they're going to say, hey, aren't you the preacher? <laughs> you know, or whoever. Oh, don't you go to this church or whatever? You know, you be quick to turn back. But what I'm saying is we got to deal with one another. Amen. How do you treat people? Do you treat people like I just treat people like I want to be treated? Do you? Do you treat everybody the same? Here's, here's something. In some, some aspects, you can't treat everybody the same. Listen to what I'm saying to this. You say, what does that mean? Go to work. And you got a guy, and you give him a job, and you say, hey, man, I need this done by Wednesday. Boom, he's on it. You get another guy, and you say, I need this job by Wednesday. You better follow up. You better check on Tuesday. You better follow See, everybody works different and stuff like that. But we can still love them equally. You see what I'm saying? So people say, well, why do you treat this one different? Why do you treat this one? Well, guess what? Because sometimes I got to get, get on the same level here. You know what I mean? But that's all right. That doesn't mean I love you any less or love you any more. But the way we communicate might be a little bit different. Amen? So look at this. It's always about your character. I hope that, you know, as, as we go in, in, our, in our life, that our character shines for Christ. How about you? Because my dad, you say, all you got is your name, boy. They can take everything. But if your name's no good, it's not good. It's not good. You know? Have you ever had somebody to promise you something and it didn't come through? Everybody has. Have you had the same person promise you a lot of stuff and it never came through? After a while, you go, yeah, yeah, whatever. Right? But you had somebody that you could count on. That's something else, isn't it? And for those of you that haven't, I know somebody you can count on. His name's Jesus. Every time. Every time. It's much bigger than us. It's all about him. And his character speaks louder than anything. Amen. God is good. I want to keep on looking through here a few more things. So with that, there's accountability, isn't it? Take a look at uh, Romans 14, 10. Yes, indeed. It says, why then do you judge your brother or why do you belittle your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. This is where I've been wanting to get to. Just giving you a little background. What do you think about when you think about God's judgment seat? Anybody happy about that? Everybody excited about that? If not, you might want to make some adjustments, right? Because guess what's coming? Didn't we say whatever God said is going to go down, right? Doesn't it say on there, for we will all stand before God's judgment seat. Now, I want to explain some of this here. I want to read through this. Y'all listen real close if you will. 
The judgment seat of Christ does not determine salvation. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm talking about the believer. You with me? That was determined by Christ's sacrifice on our behalf. I'll give you some scripture for that. 1 John 2, 2, and of course John 3, 16, and many other ones. All our sin are forgiven, and we will never be condemned for, the, for them. How many know one of my favorite Bible verses is Romans what? Chapter 1, 8, chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there's no condemnation for those in Christ. Did Pastor Bud just say, don't worry about it, you can live any way you want. That is not what he just said. I'm saying that God took care of the sin, sin situation. Let's keep on going here, all right? So all our sins are forgiven. We will never be condemned for that. We should not look at the judgment seat of Christ as judging our sins, listen close, but rather as God rewarding us for our lives. Yes, the Bible says we all will give account for our, our actions, amen? How does that make you feel this morning? I'm trying to just get a pulse right here. Because when I'm going through this, see, this is the deal. I preach a lot of stuff that's very encouraging to you. I, preach the, I try to preach the right down the pipe so you get a good understanding of what's going on. I want you to be prepared. I don't want you to be scared. I want you to be prepared. Everybody know what I'm talking about here. I, I don't want you to show up on Judgment Day and say, Pastor Buddy just said everything's lovey-dovey. Well, it is lovey-dovey, all right? But you know what? Use your life in a way that will honor God so that you see rewards at the end of the run. Amen? That's what I want you to see. It's not about works to get you to heaven. Please understand that. I want to be very care careful. But I also want you to realize that we are going to stand before the Lord. Okay, let's take a look at this. Romans 14, 11 and, and 12 says, It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself. He keeps saying that. How does it make you think? What does that make you feel like? Are we living a life right now that is glorifying God? Do we need to do a reset? Do we need to make some adjustments in our life? Okay, now take a look at this. I said that at the judgment seat of Christ, believers are rewarded based on how faithful they serve the Lord. I'm going to give you some scriptures here, all right? 1 Corinthians 9, 4 through 27, 2 Timothy 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 5. Some of these things that we may be judged on are this right here. How well we did the Great Commission. Were you about sharing, sharing the faith? Amen? You know, we've talked about this many times. Can you imagine getting there and they go, well, man, buddy, where are the 5,362 souls that I was entrusted to you to get the word out? But you didn't. I don't want to stand there on that day like that. I'm not saying you're not going to heaven. I'm just saying that our rewards are going to be burnt up if they're not following what God has laid out there. I've really prayed about this a lot before I share this with you guys. I want to give you the full understanding. I don't want to confuse anybody. How do you get saved? By grace through faith. Not that of yourself is a gift to God. Everybody with me on that? Can you add to that? Absolutely not. Does God give it and then take it away? Absolutely not. So we're on this, we got that down. All right? Let's keep on moving here. So look at this. How victorious we were over sin. This is Romans 6, uh, 1 through 4. And how well we controlled our tongues. Whoa, really? Mm. James 3, 1 through 9. All right? Take a look at this. The Bible speaks of believers receiving crowns for different things based on how faithful they serve the Lord. Are you faithfully serving the Lord? What's in your hand? Is your hand so filled with things of the world that you can't grab hold of the things of the word? I don't hear a whole lot of amen, and I figured I wouldn't today. Because, but this is, this is necessary. This is necess when I'm looking at this and I'm reading through I go, man, Lord, we've got to understand what is at stake. Amen? It's, it's real deal stuff. I want us to shine, man. I want us to, to say, I want God to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen? Amen. Come on in. That's what, we're, that's what we're, we're geared towards, right? Let's keep on looking at this. So we come on down here. Now, this is this. That's for the believer. The great white throne judgment, which is talked about in Revelation 20, uh, verse 11 through 15, is for unbelievers. Didn't he say every tongue is going to confess? Every knee is going to bow? Every tongue is going to confess? For those that don't believe now, they will then. And if we believe, we'll say, that, that's him. Listen to what it says here. Look what we got here. The judgment for the unbelievers in which they are judged according to their works and sentenced to everlasting punishment in the lake of fire. All unbelievers will be judged by Christ. So it's not going to be wrong. It's not going to be any, it's not, I don't know. No, no it's going to be right. God's judgment is going to come right on down there, right? And punished according to what they have done. 
The Bible is very clear that unbelievers are storing up wrath against their self. That's Romans 2.5. And that God will give to each person according to what he has done. Romans 2.6. I'm going to let you all think about that while I take a drink. Anybody got any thoughts on that? Can somebody say amen? amen. Is that an uplifting message? It's instead of an amen, it's an oh me. Right? And, I, and that's why that's, we, we've got we've to we've preach the whole word, right? We've got to make sure we're getting the whole deal there. Now... Let me tell you this. As believers, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Amen? What I don't want people is to be deceived, to think you say a prayer, you go out here, and you didn't even mean it, and everything else, and you think that you're okay. Do you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? It's by grace through faith. It's all what he did. Are you connecting to the gospel message? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. His blood was poured out for the sin debt for all. Have you received that into your heart? Okay, that's the deal. And then are we walking that out according to his word? Are you keeping your hands open for God to put something in it so you can be a blessing? Now, when I say that, most people think, oh, you're talking about money. I ain't even talking about money. I'm talking about your gifting. Look at that. I call my buddy John. How many of you enjoyed John's uh, sharing last week? What an amazing testimony. If you hadn't, uh, weren't here, you didn't get to see it. My brother, uh, John Castillo, is going through different things right there. Did you see how God is working in that man's life? It's still tough, but God's still working. Amen? He's quick to give God the glory. That's amazing. Is, is, is our life, and I'm not putting John up here. I'm just saying, when I asked him, would you be willing to share a story? I didn't even get it out of my mouth all the way. He's like, you tell me when. See, when we have God working our life and, and we see him doing stuff, you'll be quick to answer, yes. Yes. I know Scott's not here today, but when Scott's here, he will jump. He, he, say, he always says, it. he said, that's my job. That's what I do. Please let me tell him. You know? How excited are we about to tell what God has done in our life? Let me just say here, don't beat yourself up if, if you're not a big talker or whatever like that. The people that have spoke in my life the most have been those that maybe just listened, maybe just whispered. I had a friend of mine, I just saw the other day, he sent me a note. Got in this terrible wreck, I don't even know all the details, broke his back. And... This is a guy that spoke into my life years ago and would not be the likely candidate that you would think so. He was bouncing at bars and different things like that and everything else. And he said, hey, man, look, man, I need to talk to you. And he realized that God was doing something in my life. And he also realized that I need to follow that instead of other stuff. And then he threatened me. How do you like that? He said, dude, you better get straightened out here. He says, I'm going to tell you what, there's something bigger going on in your life than what you think it is. You hear what I'm saying? And it, with him just saying something like that, I just knew. I was like, how does he know this? He knows this. He said, me thing this week, he says, oh, man, I need you to be praying for me. I said, you got it, brother. You got it. So I want to be lifting him up. He's going through some tough times. But he knows in the midst of that who his Savior is. Amen. But everybody needs a cheerleader. Amen. Everybody knows it. And I never forgot that. Y'all have heard me mention that many times. That a guy just really, and I've had different people over my, my life speaking to my life at different times as you have as well. But isn't it amazing that sometimes we just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't forget that. He probably saved me a whole lot of heartache. I don't even know what the whole deal was, but I remember him saying, come here. Come here. What? I'm having fun. We're jamming. We're doing this. We're doing it. It's like, man, just, you need to stay focused on what the big picture is. And out of the blue, that just, this has been 35 years ago, man, something like that. Maybe 30 years ago. I don't even know. But I remember that. And, I, and, and, and you know why? Because he was in tune in that moment to what God was sharing with him. And when he spoke that into my life, my spirit said, he's speaking for me. Yeah. And it wasn't King James. <laughs> It wasn't real fluent. You know, oh, thou shalt not do this. He snatched up on me and said, hey, man, you hear what I'm saying? Don't make me take you outside. I'm listening. You say, why do you, why do you, why do you say so much about it? Because I'm grateful for the people that stepped in my life along the way and said, hey, man, this is not good for you. Hey, man, that's not good for you. 
Never had the conversation again till this week. And I told my buddy, I said, I don't know if you remember that night. But I appreciate that. And he wrote back and said, I didn't say it from anybody else, just that somebody loved you. Wow. I just knew there was more going on in your life than what you were going after. Thank God for those people. Thank God. You know, you probably would, you know, you could say, well, you know, let them fall. Let them do. But he was willing to be obedient to God even in the midst of those things. His hands was not too full to take a word from God and speak it into my life. How about you guys? Are you fruitful with that? I hope you guys got an overview on, on what we're talking about, the judgment seat. I hope that we are encouraged in that because today you can make a difference. You can say, you know what, Lord, order my steps. When you say go left, I'll go left. When you say go right, I'll go right. Be obedient to those things of God because there's a day we're going to give account. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I am not saying you can lose your salvation. Everybody heard that, right? You cannot. Scripture after scripture after scripture, I'll show you. No problem. It wouldn't be eternal life if God picked it up, took it away, took it up, took it away, took it away, right? But I'm going to tell you what. How many people want to give it a good run while they're here? I want to give it a good run. How can somebody trust you with more when you can't handle what they give you right now? Amen? I'm thinking, think about that. How can you, oh, I need more, I need more. I can't even handle what I got half the time, right? I know I can't, but through the things of God, Lord, how, give me wisdom in these situations. How do I do this? How do I do that? What, what do I do? What do you want me to do? But if you get so tied up holding on to stuff that you're not going to trust God, you think he's going to give you more? I don't know. Think about it. Pray about it. So let's just go on and move from there. I know that was a, that was a, uh, a good one to swallow on right there, but I'm going to tell you what. I'll tell you this because I love you guys. And how, how many people like this? How many people like correction? Mmm, I'm going to take some more water on that one. Mmm. Let me tell you something. When God corrects us, he does it out of love. Amen. Amen. Take a look at this. 1320 says, God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be required of you. Then who will own what you have accumulated? God calls this person a fool that solely puts all his time and effort in his pleasure for his own gain. Amen. For his own gain. I heard this one time. I haven't researched the facts on this, but I read this one time, and it's always stuck in my mind. I have never been there to Hershey plant, Hershey thing. I heard years ago, and I might have it off a little bit, but you'll get the gist out of this story. Said the guy, things were moving along. They were building this plant and all this stuff. And, and they said something along the lines. I said, hey, man. He said, we could get one, uh, one tractor or one big piece of equipment. And uh, you know what? We could get rid of uh, 37 people. He said, get rid of the tractor and hire 37 people. Isn't that amazing? I like, the, I like his thinking. It wasn't about that. Like, see, a lot of times, yeah, God wants us to be effective, efficient. I'm not saying anything like that. But he saw a greater worth in people than he did the stuff. He was being fruitful. Guess what? I'm talking about that guy today. I ain't talking about the other guys that had stuff that didn't, you know, get outside the box. So think about that. This guy, God's talking to him, the Lord's talking to him, and he says, look, you're fool, you fool. Tonight, your life will be required of him. He says, when you die, all you own, everything that you've accumulated, somebody else is going to get it. Now, have you all ever seen this? I know, has anybody watched Lifetime TV? If this wasn't the truth, they wouldn't even have no movies, Right? You ever see somebody that come from a rich family? I'm not knocking people for having stuff. Please just work with me through here. But they'll get something. And usually what happens in the movie, and it does happen in real life, right? Watch something yesterday. That the parents will kick off and they'll take and squander all the money. Amen? Because they weren't prepared for that, right? They'll turn around. They might take the parents out to get the money, right? Are we preparing them to be able to serve and use and be a blessing. Now, let me tell you something. You don't have to have a fistful of money to teach your kids that. I try to teach my guys that. I say, okay, hey, look. You know, it's funny now. It's funny when my boys buy, they look at the menu a lot closer than they did when I was buying. You ever seen that? They were like, ah, I'll just get water. <laughs> what? 
Oh, I'm speaking the truth out of here. But I go, what? But that's good because they've learned. It's like, hey, you know, let's see what they got on special. That's smart. That's not bad. I'm not coming down. I'm going, thank the Lord. They picked up on something here. You know, that's good stuff. Uh, do we really appreciate that? Are you stretching that money? Now, I'm going to tell you what, man. Jessica stretch, stretch the money. I love it. Thomas, too. That's good. Me, a little bit. Denise, she does real good. But I'm probably the worst out of all of them, you know, probably. But, uh, you know, I said, just has the money holding up. He said, I got, I got, I got the ass. I'm good. I'm good. I was like, man, that dude's working it, isn't he? He's really working it. But see, he told me before he go to eat with his friends, and they go out, and they get all this big stuff. They just say, I'll get, uh, I'll get the ribs, or I'll get this, and they got a special on that. It's good. And Jesse go out three or four times when they go out once. I said, that's my boy right there. That's good. That's really good. Or if nobody else wants to go with him, he'll call me, and I'll go, and I'll buy. <laughs> we do it, don't we? And you know what? I come running. You know why? Because I know my time with them are very... Very short. But you know what? It is. We get to do some cool stuff. But usually at about 14, I was the man, baby. Dad, what do you want to do? Dad, what do you want to do? Dad, go long, Dad. Go, hey, Dad, let's do this, Dad. Can we, can we do it? Dad, 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 Dad. 16, Dad, give me gas. Gone. Woo! I'll be right here. But you do that. And my wife is so good. She always says, just remember when you were that age. I go, that's why I'm praying so hard. I do remember when I was that age. Oh, my goodness. But I'm very blessed and I'm very thankful that, that we try to use the time that they're home as a training tool. Amen. I always say, hey, man, if you, if, you, if you stop, drop, and roll, I want you to do it here so I can pick you up. I want you to, I want to, be, I want you to know you're here. You know? My dad used to tell me, he said, you always have a place to go. You always have something to eat as long as I got it. But let me just tell you this. You marry off, you don't marry on. I said, what? He said, fly. Fly, boy. I said, all right. So, <laughs> I, I, the Holy Spirit is working in this message today. He's like, that's good. You know? But that was, that was the thing. He's like, hey, man, I want you to do good and everything else. But then he, he said, hey, did you think about this? Did you think about this? But sometimes we get so wrapped around what's going on, we don't even realize that, you know what, tonight could be the last night we're here. I say it many times, this might be the last message I preach. It might be the last time I say this or say that. Because you know what? I tell people a lot I love them, and I mean it. I don't just say that, oh, because we just say, man, what about that guy? You know, that guy always tells me he loves me. That's right. I do. I am so blessed, man, to have, have the church family that I have here. It's amazing. I'm, I, I'm so thankful, you know, for the prayers. I am so grateful to be a part of, of what God's doing through you guys. It, it's humbling, man. But you know what? If I was to fall over tomorrow, I sure hope you all keep going. Bring them up. He was a nice guy. Give me another song. Praise Jesus. You know what I mean? I always tell them. I've told them since we started. I said, if something happens and I was to fall over on the floor, 911. Preach Jesus. That's it. Just use it as a, use it as a daggone sermon illustration. You know, just say, hey, see how fast it went? Do you know Jesus? Everybody be like, I need to get saved, right? <laughs> I ain't kidding. <laughs> they say, we're just kidding. <laughs> get up, Pastor Buddy, get up. Yeah. But wouldn't that be something? I, I've never seen that, but I've heard that happen before. You're preaching and fall over. Because I don't know about you. Do you think I get a little excited about preaching? I bet you my blood pressure is pumping, man. I'm thinking because I'm thinking of the, my brain's going like this. It's going like that. And I'm going, that word wasn't what I was thinking. Lord, bring it back. And he said, no, stretch right on out to it. We're going to make it happen. But, you know, that's the deal. So we can accumulate a lot of stuff. And, and how many people have this? this? I'm just really just bearing my heart with you guys today. How many people have been or knew? How about we say that? No, folks, they've had a death in the family. Somebody, you know, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, great uncle, whatever, passed away. And all of a sudden, it is a fight about stuff. Yep. It's crazy. I remember when my grandparents passed away. My dad was so cool. He said, uh, he's gone. I ain't, I'm good. My granddad was left. My grandmother passed away. Then my, my grandfather passed away. And my dad said, that's all right. He said, uh, she said well, well uh, what about it? He said, well, I did give him that shotgun and a fan. Okay. Y'all let me know if you need something. 
He, would, he didn't want to know. He wasn't worried about anything else. He, he wouldn't even gave that away. Like I told my sister, I said, there's, there's, there's really two things I wanted something happen to my folks. There's a clock that I used to play with that don't work when I was a kid. That was my grandma's. And it's got this little lady dancing like this on it. <laughs> I, I'd like to have that. And there's a picture of my dad when he was about five years old. And he had nothing. That's what I want. It's not bad having stuff. But I'm going to tell you what. It don't matter. It don't matter. I'm not going to argue about stuff. I'll just say just something else. My dad um, had a, a farmland. Had farmland. It's like 58 acres or something in West Virginia. I went there once when I was 11 years old. And so that's what, that's what it is. And me and my sister own that, right? And they asked, um, could you log some of the stuff off? And I was like, oh, I'm cool. Yeah, fine. They could take that off. Maybe bring in some money or whatever like that. And my sister said, I really don't want to do that. That's okay. That was it. I'm not going against my sister. I'm not going against my mom. I'm not going against him. I don't care. Because my dad would roll over in his grave if he thought there was fighting on something he left behind. Amen? Not going to happen. Not going to happen. So if you got something, write it down. We'll go with it. That's it. You say, how in the world do we get to here? Sometimes we store up so much stuff, but what we're really doing is storing up wrath for ourselves. Amen? We still want, oh, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this. Again, I'm not preaching against stuff. I just want us to get a good picture of what God says is really important. And that's following him. Amen? Take a look at this. 21. And it says, this is how it will be for anyone who stores up treasure for himself but is not rich towards God. Look at this. He's, we went through the whole thing and read it when it was in the blue slide up here. I said, friends, are we preparing others along the way to be kingdom-minded or to be king of the mountain? Anybody play King of the Mountain? Yeah. 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 Somebody will chuck a dirt cloud at you at 30 paces, buddy. Oh, I didn't know there was a rock in there. Okay. What did you find out being King of the Mountain? You're only up there for a little while. And the higher the mountain, the further you fall. Yeah. Amen. Jeff, you remember those dirt, dirt hills we used to have down there behind Merrimack? I got a couple scars from there. Oh, we can get up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You get up there, man, we get up there, and that's it. And then they start pulling on you. Then they start pulling. Then they start kicking you. Then they start pulling you down. All this like, oh, my goodness, man. You know, that's what the world does. You don't believe that? Look at our president. Whether you like him or you don't like him or whatever. All I've heard is, all I hear on, on the news is like, well, he's not doing this. He's doing that. I'm, they're just, man, why would you want that job? You know? If God's called you to it. Do it with everything you can. And whether who's your president or who whatever it is, pray for them. Amen? The Lord said pray for them. I'm not getting into politics. I'm just saying pray for our leaders. That's scriptural. Amen? Amen. Pray for our leaders. But look at this here. Sometimes we get all wrapped around it. I said, again, I want to read this again. Are we really preparing our children and our lives and our spouses and our, and our church family for, to be kingdom-minded or playing king of the hill? Got to get more. Got to get more. Got to have more. Got to do more. And the truth is, a lot of times we can't even handle what we got. Amen? Let's take a look at this. I'm going to pick up the speed a little bit. I said, make the course corrections today. Every minute counts. And I said, this is to prepare us. This is to help us. And I know it's not comfortable. But it's not supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to really sink deep in our hearts and make sure that we are aligning our life with what God has for us. Anybody want to finish big? Anybody want to finish good? Is there any adjustments in our life? Probably so. Probably daily. And I'm preaching to me first. Amen? So I never come up here and look at this message and go, well, this don't apply to me. I'm just telling y'all. Let me tell you, when I get up here, I've already run this through my life. And it still hurts a little bit here and there. Because I know there's corrections and connections and different things that I need to do. How about you guys? But it's okay. But I want us to be able to shine bright for the Lord. I said, don't, I don't want us to live and think everything's okay. And then we say, you know, and we get before the Lord and he goes, well, you know, I, I blessed you in this area, but you, you just kept making more barns, making more barns, making more barns. I don't know what it is that God's talking to you about today on these different areas of your life. But listen and be obedient to what he's asking. You know, 
I don't know what it is. Is it that, hey, you know what? Maybe you need to start a little ministry uh, through some of the stuff you're doing over here. Maybe you need to call somebody and forgive them. Maybe you need to just love on somebody where they are. Maybe you ought to say, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do, but you know what? If you make it clear, I'll do my best to do it. How about that? Because people say, well, buddy, I know you know what, what God called you to do. Thank the Lord. Yeah, but it does take different deviations as we go. God doesn't just say, you're a preacher. I'll be back in six months. It's a relationship, right? So think about those things. But I'm going to tell you what. When you're in the center of God's will, there is no better place to be. Amen? No better place to be. And it might not always be comfortable. This message is not real comfortable to preach, but guess what? It's necessary. So that's what we're going to go with. Because it's the truth. It's God's word. There's scripture after scripture after scripture. I want you guys to be ready for whatever God has for you guys to be open to whatever God has for you. And if you need to make the course corrections, let's do it today, man. You can't do it when, when you're gone. But we can do it today. Amen. Everybody doing good? Anybody encouraged? Yes. Praise the Lord. That's good. So guess what? I, I, I try to keep it simple for, for me. Deception, correction, and reflection. So here's a question. All right. I'll say it this way. What is your greatest possession? I want you to think about it for just a second. No, I'm not going to call on you, but you got one or two things in your mind? Greatest possession? Right? Could it be health? Could it be wealth? Could it be wisdom? Is our hands full with this worry and fear? When I say greatest possession, I don't mean just really abundance and, and everything good. A lot of times people are filled up with bitterness. They possess more they possess more bitterness and hatefulness than anything else. Negativity. Negativity is rough, man. You better be filling up if you're gonna spend some time with somebody negative because it will drain you all day long. Oh sure it's nice to say, yeah, but it's too cold. Well at least it's not raining. Yeah, but it rained yesterday. Have you ever been with somebody and you just say, can you just tell me one good thing? Just one good thing. One. Let's start with one good thing. You know? And then they get mad at you. <laughs> they get mad. It's like, no, okay, we went through this. They don't pay you enough. They, nobody respects you. Nobody liked the job. We should have done this. We should have done it this way. All 50, 11 things, all this different thing. Any good thing? You know? You go to your job. Do they pay you at your job? That's good. Do they pay you decent? That's good. Anybody get a little vacation? That's good. Hey, you ain't working on Sunday. That's good. All right, so if you could just find a couple of things, it'll start building momentum. It's like, man, I like my job because you know what? They pay me. I like my job because you know what? I get to work with all the fun guys I work with. I hope you're watching. We do have one time. Because every now and then, I think they're not watching and they go, hey, man, uh, I saw you this weekend. What are you, the Facebook preacher? I say, I'll be any type of preacher for Jesus. Oh, okay. It's all right. You think that hurts me? You were watching. Bring it on. <laughs> you know, it's good. Gotcha. 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 Bring it on, man. Put the word out any way you can. I want to reflect the Lord. So let's go back. What is your greatest thing that you possess? Possess. Is it your Bible? Is it your salvation? Is any of those first five things... One, two, three, four, five. Greater than God. Greater than a personal relationship with the Lord. None. So if that is the greatest thing you possess, a relationship with the Lord Jesus, how do you invest in it? How do you share it? Let's start with stuff. If you got a diamond ring, you're going you're gonna to know where it's at. You're going to have it insured. You're going to do this. And you might do this every now and then. <laughs> how y'all doing? Oh, yeah. You know? Nobody would do that, would they? Yeah. I remember a guy, man, we were working. I got I to gotta share this. Back when we were in our 20s, I worked with a lot of the guys I've worked with all my life. And we were all lifting weights. We were pumping up. And we had a guy, we nicknamed him Flex, right? Good guy. But he would answer the phone like this. He'd get the phone and go, let it ring a couple times. Like, man, you're going to get the phone. He had this big old muscle shirt. And he go, hello? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think he went over there. No, it might have been up there. And we're going, are you kidding me? 
<laughs> it wasn't Miles, but Miles got a good idea what I'm talking about. We love you, brother, if you're on there. I ain't giving up no more than that. But it's funny. Yeah, it is so funny, man. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> or, or you go up to the candy locker, right? You know, but most expensive thing we got is a Slim Jim for 50 cents. Anybody got, anybody got change for 100? <laughs> Do you got change for 100? Man, just write the IOU. Nobody's got no change for 100 on a Monday. What are you talking about? And then you go back in the end of the week and say, why has he got so many IOUs in here? Just put the 100 in and take the, the Slim Jim, you know? People are funny, man. It's funny. But we like it all about us, don't we? We do. So what are we reflecting? Are we reflecting us? Are we building bigger barns for our stuff? I'm not preaching against stuff. I'm preaching for Jesus. I'm preaching to, to open your hearts, man. I don't want anybody to come up short. And you will never come up short in the Lord, amen? Never come up short in the Lord. But I want you to think about that. Because sometimes when, when things start getting uh, stripped away, we have to, to, to itemize. We have to regroup a little bit. Amen? Right? Think about that. What's the most... And, and here's the thing. Nobody can take your salvation. But don't squander it. Share it. Share it. Man, I love sharing Jesus. Did y'all know that? Why? It is the best thing I know. It's the best thing. It's the best thing I could ever tell anybody. I could play your song on guitar. It ain't going to change your life. I could fix a flat tire for you. It's not going to change your life. It might get you home. The gospel message will transform your life for eternity, man. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying right there. Man, I want to reflect that. I want people to know that. I don't care about it. Hello. I want to know about this right here. Yes. Do you know the Lord? Do you know that the world will deceive you into thinking, just sit on the sidelines, it's all right. Don't tell nobody about Jesus. You ain't got to go to church today. They got a live stream. You ain't got to show up. That's all right. Then you forget to turn it back on. Right? I know everybody can't make it all the time, but we miss you when you're not here. I understand that. I understand that. But you know what? You're being prayed for daily. One of my daily prayers when I open up, Lord, thank you for our church family. I pray that, Lord, you see that every need is met through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to understand. Help us to be that reflection. Help us to be that mirror of Christ. Lord, help us to do what you have us to do, Lord. Because that's the big deal. I don't want to turn around and at the end of the day and people say, oh, they thought it was all about this or all about that. I, thought, I hope it was all about Jesus. You know, I never ever, ever come up here thinking I got it all together. I come up here pointing to the one who does, and his name is Jesus. And that's what God's called me to do. And at the same time, I want to make sure everybody knows and they understand how much God loves them and what he's done for them and receive all that right there. So let me go back to where we were on our question asking. Are your hands full? Think about that says, watch out, guard yourself against every form of greed, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Close your eyes for one second here. Two seconds. Can you think of somebody that God's put in your life that is a mirror of Christ? You got that person? Thank God for them. Now, open your eyes. Are you that person to somebody else? I pray that we are. I pray that we are. Some days better than others, right? And you know, real folks that love the Lord along with you, they'll love you through it when you miss a mark. They'll love you through it. You know, they'll say, let me, let me just say this. I don't even know where. If I send you a text and it doesn't make sense, give me the benefit of the doubt. You know my heart. If I, I, if I send out something that's just a short little bloop, I'm probably doing something else. Don't mean I love you any less. You've walked with me. You've been with me. You hear me talk. You see my life. You see what's going on. And it's not always perfect. But just give people benefit of the doubt. Say, man, the guy might be going through a rough day, rough time. Pray for the guy. Pray for the lady when they're doing that. Say, I don't know what's going on in their life. You know? You ever work with somebody and they just act just totally different for a couple of months? And then they go, hey, man, you got a second? And they pull you to the side and said, I know I haven't been myself, 
but I got stuff going on. How about that? Everybody's different. Everybody doesn't put all their information out, and that's okay. Love them where they are. Then, you know, I always say we default to the negative, man, this old flesh. What would happen if we defaulted and just said, I'm going to pick the best in that person's life? I'm just going to choose that, you know what? They're just having a bad day. I'm just going to choose the day like, you know what? I'm going to keep on walking. I'm going to pray for that person. How about that? You might see a whole lot of things change. Probably starting with the guy in the mirror and the lady in the mirror. Because what that does is it, it, it expands our heart to compassion. I've had people say this to me over time, and, and they'd say it meaning, meaning well and everything. Else. You know what? I don't think I do all that. You're too nice. You're too nice. Not always. I'm not always Mr. Wonderful. Pretty close, though, ain't it, Grandmama? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Lord, help me. But uh, I don't know if she added something on the end of that, but I'm not going to ask what it was. I'm sure it was only good, right? <laughs> but guess what? We can all have a bad day. But here's the thing. What are your hands full of? Are they full of the love of Christ? Are they full of compassion? Are they full of giving and lifting up? Mercy, grace. I say this all the time. I don't want you to be a Christian floor mat, but I want you to be a mirror of Christ, and I pray that I am. Because you know what? There's no greater thing that we could ever do. Watch out. Guard your heart. Because there's always something that's trying to knock you off that mountain in the world. Always. King of the mountain, child of the kingdom. We are children of the Most High God. Let us pray. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I pray today that you take this message and make it so much more. I pray that you just hone in the parts of, that, that just really need to just be brought out and, and just show us, Lord, that there is a day that we'll give account for our lives. Lord, that today is the day of our salvation. I pray that if there's anybody here listening to me today, this message is not to confuse you. It's not to scare you. It is to prepare you. And I want you to know this. The greatest preparation anybody can have is to call on the name of Jesus. That is the only way. He says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So while we're talking and sharing that today, I, I just pray if you're listening online, whether you listen right now or later today, this is the question. It's always the question. If you died tonight, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? And when you have put your faith and trust in the finished work of the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you say, Lord, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Today, I am trusting you that you paid my sin debt in full. The Bible says all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. You say, well, what happens if I don't? Well, the Bible's very clear. Just like we said, we'll stand before the Lord and give account of our works. And guess what? Our works are like filthy rags. He said, depart from me. I didn't know you not. There is a place called hell. And it ain't pretty. The Bible goes into great detail of all the terrible things about that place. I don't want to see anybody go there. And nobody has to go there. No matter how bad you think you were, how lost you think you were, you can be found today because God is here. So I want you to hear that today. It can all change in an instant. It's by grace you're saved through faith, not of yourself. It's a gift to God. Friends, I, I pray today that you receive that gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Well, let's stand to our feet, and we got a song, a beautiful song. Miss Tanya wrote some time ago, and I think you guys are going to like it.
I hope everybody had a good time today. What a blessing it is to be able to come to you guys all around the world because of what God's doing through technology and what God is doing through you. So I pray that if you guys have any questions about the message, drop us a line. You've already been prayed for. I hope today uh, is a, a message that would just help us recalibrate our walk with the Lord and encourage us to do all we can and be all we can in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all say bye-bye. All right.